Okay, good morning everybody and happy new year. I hope everyone had a uh, enjoyable and safe night last night. Uh, certainly from a policing perspective, it was a relatively quiet night uh, in South Australia overnight. A total of uh, 57 people have been arrested um, and 41 people reported for a variety of offences overnight, mainly behavioural type offences uh, and offences involving uh, alcohol mainly have been the contributing causes to why police have been called out overnight. There's also been 113 expiations issued uh, in overnight as well. Um, this is again mainly related to um, uh, drug possession, minor drug possession and also behaviour related offences. Um, disappointingly, despite all of the different media campaigns that we've done, uh, new media campaigns that we've done uh, this year in relation to uh, drink and drug driving, uh, there's been a number of people um, reported or arrested overnight for uh, drink driving. Um, so we've had uh, 44 um, people reported for uh, drink driving. The highest readings that we received overnight uh, were two individuals, a 36-year-old man from the northern suburbs who recorded a, a, breath al a blood alcohol uh, concentration of uh, 0.219 and then another male, a 35-year-old male from uh, Clare who recorded a blood alcohol concentration of 0.203. Um, now these are absolutely ridiculous uh, limits of alcohol that not only place these people at danger, but uh, other people on our roads at danger as well. Um, in addition to this, uh, from those uh, drink and drug drivers that uh, have been apprehended, um, there's uh, 25 people who are starting the year, this year without their license, and there's a further 21 people who will be starting this year without their car for a period of time because it's been impounded because of their driving behaviour. Um, largely, uh, we've uh, seen relatively quiet uh, night across, uh, particularly the CBD. Um, there were quite a few people around our coastline uh, overnight. Um, but uh, we're generally pretty pleased with the way that, uh, that everybody's behaved and certainly a, uh, it appears to be a quieter, a quieter year um, than it has been in previous times. Uh, so uh, largely, I can say, apart from uh, perhaps uh, people still uh, taking risks on our roads, um, we're largely very happy with the way that uh, people have seen 22, um, uh, 2022 in, in this year. Can you please provide us an update on the incidents at Lake Bonnie and Swan Reach? Yeah, so uh, overnight at about uh, quarter past nine, uh, police and emergency services uh, were called uh, to an area on the River Murray just out of Swan Reach uh, where a teenager has fallen from a houseboat um, and Despite uh, the efforts of the people on board the houseboat at the time, and despite an initial search overnight, uh, has not yet been, been located. Uh, we are continuing the search again this morning, including the police divers from the Water Operations Unit, uh, in an attempt to try and find this teenager. Um, but unfortunately, at this stage, it doesn't look good. Uh, also on the river uh, last night, but uh, on Lake Bonnie, uh, which is near Barmer in the Riverland. Uh, two men uh, were on a paddle boat, uh, paddled out into the middle of the river about two o'clock in the morning. Um, the paddle boat and an esky, uh, some personal belongings, some clothing and bits and pieces uh, have been found uh, on the shores of Lake Bonnie, but we're yet to locate those two males. Uh, so again, a search is underway at this particular point in time. Um, what I'm hoping is that they're just nursing a, a bit of a headache and they haven't yet woken up, but certainly if anyone has any information about uh, people who are missing, uh, in the Lake Bonnie area, two males who are missing in the, in the uh, Lake Bonnie area from overnight. Uh, we would certainly like to hear from them, which may assist us to, uh, to locate them, hopefully safe and well. How old is the teenager do you know um, at Swan Ridge? Uh, I understand the teenager is a 17 year old, um, so, but um, obviously this is still pretty raw and, and pretty live for, for the people involved, particularly the families. So um, whilst we continue to investigate this, we're just limiting the amount of information that we provide. Is it more of a retrieval than a search? Uh, look, we're hopeful still, there's a slim chance. Um, it is a search at this particular point in time, but um, like I said, it, it is uh, despite the efforts of people on board the houseboat last night uh, and the efforts of uh, police and emergency services, we have not yet been able to locate the teenagers. So unfortunately, it's not looking very good at this point in time. Are you able to provide any details as to how to take the fall off the houseboat? As to? How to take the fall off the houseboat? Uh, look, I, I can't at the moment because it still is forming part of the investigation. We're still needing to talk to a few people about what's happened and, and really find out uh, what the circumstances were. But um, in any case, uh, an absolutely tragic way to start 2022. Do you have any yeah, yeah. Do you have any details on the incident at Brahma Lodge last night where a police car was rammed? 
Uh, yes, uh, yesterday, uh, late yesterday evening, uh, uh, police spotted a stolen vehicle, uh, which was then followed by Polair for some time. Uh, that stolen vehicle was pulled into a car park in Brahma Lodge, and police patrols have been directed in by Polair. As police patrols have arrived, a 34-year-old uh, male from Osborne has uh, jumped into the car and in an attempt to avoid apprehension has uh, deliberately rammed the police vehicle, causing significant damage to the stolen car in the police vehicle. Uh, thankfully, I understand our police officers uh, were not injured in this, uh, which is a really good outcome. Uh, the male's then uh, exited the vehicle and has tried to escape, but has been caught a very short distance away. Um, he was taken to hospital for um, uh, checking over last night, but uh, has been arrested for a range of offences and refused police bail. Were there any uh, breaches of COVID rules last night? Uh, the only two uh, breaches of COVID rules that uh, I'm aware of are two expiations uh, that were issued for face masks or people not wearing face masks. Uh, so again, yeah, we thank uh, the community of South Australia for their ongoing support and compliance with the COVID rules. We know it is a really tough environment that we're all um, living in at the moment, but uh, clearly everyone's trying to do the right thing. And I think um, probably part of the reason why last night was uh, relatively quiet, comparatively speaking, is because you know, people are actually doing the right thing. And, and we certainly do appreciate the community support in keeping South Australia safe from COVID. So is that any licensed venues that uh, I actually don't have the details exactly on, on where the face masks um, are, but clearly it would be in some sort of premises, I would have thought. No, that's correct. I haven't been advised of any breaches of you know, overcrowding at houses and things like that. So, um, you know, I think part of the other the other issue we did have last night was uh, a few um, illegal fireworks, if you like, being let off in certain places, but certainly nothing of of note that uh, causes any real concern last night, which again is great because you know everyone's doing the right thing. Have you spoken to the family of the incident at Swan Reach? How, how are they doing? Uh, so no, look, I personally haven't spoken to the family. We do have a police force command set up in Swan Reach at the moment and pulling out all stops as part of our search, um, looking for these two males. But like I said, best case scenario is, is that they're nursing a pretty heavy headache and we're hoping that that is the case. Um, we are asking that if uh, there is anybody in the Riverland area, particularly Lake Bonnie, uh, who um, have friends or, or loved ones who have not yet returned home, two males, and then to ask uh, them to contact police on 13444 so that we can find out some more details and hopefully unpack it. Um, but as I said, we're continuing a, a very large search effort in the meantime to try and locate these males safe and well. So do you know who they are? Have you, have you identified who the two males are? No, not at this time. That's part of the issue that we're uh, trying to unpack as the investigation at the moment. So we actually don't know who these two males are. So I'm sure that the investigators um, and the search effort today will um, hopefully unravel that, uh, that pretty quickly. And hopefully that helps us to locate these two people safe and well. Who's involved in the Swan Reach search? For the missing for the teenager, can you describe just to me how, how large the operation is? Uh, look, with any any operation like this, uh, where someone uh, goes missing on the river, uh, it is quite a large operation. So uh, we often use um, our SES volunteers uh, to help search on the river. Uh, we'll use police officers on foot around river banks, uh, and also we uh, ask them. Well, I understand that the water operations unit and the divers have also gone up to the river as well. So. You know, it's a large scale search effort and complicated by the fact we've got you know, two searches happening at the same time in, in, a, uh, in an area of the Riverland uh, involved in, in, you know, involving water and water safety. So I guess it's just a, uh, it's a timely reminder that if you are holidaying on the river that you actually need to stay safe. It can be quite a dangerous place, um, but as long as you, you know, take all the reasonable precautions and act in a reasonable way, um, you'll have a, an enjoyable holiday break. Is that right? Thanks very much. Happy Thank New Year, you. everybody. Happy New Year. Thank you very much.